Welcome to another episode of My Point Three Garage. Today we're going to show you the year-long episode that we had with building the short block, essentially. Uh, today we're just going to be putting the pistons together, but because this is a stroker motor, uh, so it's going to be a 347, there's some special steps in there that you don't do with standard pistons. And then also the trouble that we had with the company that we bought the rotating kit from caused us a gigantic nightmare. And then third, what's up with machine shops? I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna dog on machine shops in general because they're necessary. But man, I can't. I have the worst luck with machine shops, and uh, it has cost me too much money and too much time. And we're gonna go into that. Now that we've gotten everything back from the machine shop. I talked to the machine shop, they said it doesn't matter what order the pistons and the rods go in. That was wrong. After weighing everything with my scale here, when we're talking in grams, we're not talking that much weight. But in a rotating assembly, every gram is important. So some of these pistons weighed in excess of two grams different from others. We also had pins that weighed in excess of two grams different than others. The rods were actually the closest. I can tell that the ground on the rods there's not a lot of grinding on the pistons uh, to balance them out. And from what I can tell, there's no grinding on the pins. So what I did was I weighed the top and the bottom of the rod. I also weighed each rod bolt to kind of give you an idea of how, what extent I went to and put it all on this spreadsheet here. And I basically put all of this back together again and I weighed every piston and I weighed every ring. I weighed all of the clips, uh, which were perfectly in sync. None of them were out of any kind of tolerance. They were all one and a half grams each. And then I matched them up to where we are less than a gram for each piston, meaning that each piston kit is less than one gram from lowest to highest. So I think we've got this exactly where we need it. Now we know that small end and large end on the rod makes a big difference obviously because this is rotating weight and this is reciprocating weight. Same thing with the piston, reciprocating weight. But with, I feel good that now that we've got it within a gram for each piston, that with the, with the fact that we're not gonna be revving this thing over 6,000 RPM, I don't think this thing is gonna see much over 5,000 RPM. It's made to be a low rev torque monster, then we're, we're gonna be fine. I think this is gonna be good. I'm actually happy about this now. I was not happy about it for an entire year. And when I got these pistons back from the second machine shop, I still was not happy with them. But now that I've worked on it a little bit, I feel much better within one gram low to high. My heaviest is 1173.83 uh, grams and my lightest is 1172.89 grams. So that's within one gram. Uh, and that's everything in the rotating kit minus in the rings, which again, like I said, were even across all eight cylinders. So they're not going to play a big factor in this. So now that the math is done, I'm feeling comfortable about where these are. I'm going to start assembling these pistons. So at this point, I'm going to make sure that the valve reliefs are facing up and the rod has the chamfer on this side facing towards me or when you're looking at the back facing towards the left because when we place this in the bore it's going to be sitting up against the rod journal right there. Lubricate the piston just a little bit and the rod and the pin making sure that the chamfered end is facing in towards myself Sliding the pin through until it gets past where I'm going to put the clip. This one is complete. And then I'm going to match the back of the rod chamfer with the correct chamfer on this side. And I'm just going to leave it just like that. Now we're going to put our clips in. Just the easy pressure not to actually bend this clip because if you bend it too much it is wire you'll actually bend it out of shape and it won't lock correctly. But in this case, we have locked it correctly. And then we are going to turn this and do the same thing on this side. Finger right there so we don't shoot it across the garage. 
and set it right into place. Just like that. Easy pressure. You don't want to bend that clip. It looks like we have it seated very nicely. All right, now we're ready for bearings. We're going to put on our rod bearings. So the rods obviously have a notch on one end. We're going to match that notch up with the notch in the bearing. We're using King bearings, but uh, there are a lot of really good brands out there. Same thing on the rod cap. You'll hear it pop when it's in. And then just make sure that you get the bevel correct so that these are installed in the right order. So now we're on to the rings. For instance, this is piston number eight. Piston number eight, when this is in the bore, to my right is going to be the back of the engine, to my left is going to be the front of the engine. And so we are going to install the oil rings to where they are in the back of the engine. So they're going to gap here, bottom ring, spacer, oil ring. So there's going to be basically an inch apart from the center of the spacer and that's the way I'm going to build it. This is the back of the engine. Then we're going to turn it around and we're going to put the two compression rings at, uh, at either end of this side of the piston here so that they're gapped just like that. When you're talking stroker motors, you're talking more compact pistons. So the distance between the top ring and the oil ring and the actual skirt length is actually going to be much more compact in this than in the stock. Uh, 5.0 piston, which is a much girthier piston. In this particular case, you can see here where the pin connects the rod and the piston right here. It actually cuts into the oil ring gap. So what we're going to need to do here is we're going to need to put oil ring supports in here, which is it's basically just a ring that is made of spring steel that sits on this bottom lip right here and supports the rest of the oil rings as if there were going to be this lip back in place. Now that said, these particular pistons, they came with their own oil ring support. Here's the problem and another reason why Speedmaster is not my favorite company. And that is, notice that this oil ring support has a gap in it right here. Okay, so it is built just like a regular ring. They're a little bit oversized in the fact that when they go into the bore, they actually compress a little bit and you have a little bit of clearance in there, right? So that said, the oil ring spacer should be much smaller than the bore. So if we were gonna go and put this in the bore, let me show you what would happen. Oil support ring from Speedmaster won't even go in the bore. So now I know when I put it in there, I'm gonna to have to compress this get in there, it's gonna right up down the sternal wall. The United correct one falls right down in. In fact, it's significantly smaller than the bore. So obviously it'll get bigger when you put it around the piston, but it's still smaller than the skirt on the piston. And it will not ride on this. So make sure you get the right ones. A good support ring will not touch the outside of the wall. It actually will hug the interior face of the piston. So right in here, you see the interior face where the inside of the groove, a good one will hug the inside of that and not actually protrude out past the lip because this is spring steel. You don't want this running up and down the wall of your piston. So that was my first tip that these sucked and that I should not use them. I went to go to put them in the bore and I actually had to compress them to get them in the bore, which meant that this was actually gonna ride on the cylinder wall. Not that we want, not what we wanna do. The second thing is, is that I know that there should be some sort of dimple pressed into this somewhere so that when you put it into the oil ring groove right here, that it doesn't spin. Because if it spins in the oil ring groove, it could, because technically it's not supposed to be touching the walls, right? It could actually spin to where the gap meets, right, uh, meets that gap and then falls and could potentially even spin its way around to right underneath this lip and then just gouge the ever living crap out of your cylinder wall. So this is supposed to have some sort of a dimple in it to where when you put it in there, that dimple actually keeps it from moving back and forth and, and this won't move. Now let me show you one that is correct. This is correct. This is a UEM80 from Summit. United Motor actually makes, there's only a couple of companies I could find that actually make these oil ring supports. First of all, you'll notice that there's no gap here, okay? It actually, I can pull it to where there's a gap, 
but there's generally not a gap there. And the reason why is because this is made to be smaller than the piston. So if I were to put these two together, you'll see how much bigger the one that Speedmaster gave me is than this one. And it touches the cylinder walls. When I put this in the cylinder just like this, it does not touch the cylinder walls. I can move it around like this inside the cylinder. It's not going to touch the cylinder wall. It's, it's mainly just going to sit in there and it's going to support that oil ring set so that it doesn't collapse down into that gap. Now the second thing is, you'll notice right there there's a dimple. Right on top of there, I don't know if you can see that or not, but there is a dimple right there. It sticks out just a little bit, but it's enough that when you put it, when you put it into this ring here, you want it to fall into that gap and then that dimple will keep the spacer from moving back and forth. It will probably run up against one side and stay there. So therefore you won't ever have it collapse. Now these are about $3 a piece. They're worth every penny to go out and buy a good set of them because the stuff that comes with Speedmaster, and I'm hoping no other company does this, this stuff is just crap. I don't, why they put it in there, yet again, I have absolutely no idea why I bought this stuff. But I am glad that I noticed it before I assembled the motor. Now the second issue that you have is that this spacer takes up room, right? So Speedmaster stated that this uses a three millimeter oil ring set. My, and when I measure this gap, it actually comes out to about a 3.99 millimeter. So it's probably right at a four millimeter. Now this measures between 0.7 to 0.8 millimeters right here inside this gap. So that leaves a pretty big margin between this and the three millimeter oil rings. I couldn't find a set of rings that uh, was over a three millimeter that would fit this piston. I mean, slightly over three millimeter. Uh, so I ordered a three and a four and I thought I would just mix match the exact same ring set, just with one with a four millimeter oil spacer, one with a three millimeter oil spacer. And then between those, I can probably find a good setup, and I did. I actually found a great setup. In fact, what I did was I used the spacer, and then I used the actual scraper rings from the four millimeter stack, and I used the spacer in the three millimeter stack, and that fits with 0 .003 tolerance, which is you want between 0 .001 and 0 .005. So that puts me right in the middle of my ring tolerance. And so that was perfect. The problem is I had to buy two sets of rings because I can't buy an oil ring spacer very easily. Uh, I just wanted a two millimeter oil ring spacer, but I couldn't find one. So I just bought two sets of rings. So that cost me a little over $100. But now I have a good setup for this piston. So let's go ahead and install them. So the oil control ring spacer, typically the gap is gonna go on the top of the piston right here, which would actually put the dimple right inside this gap. So if you look at the, there's a dimple on there. Just make sure that the dimple is actually facing down. And this is gonna be pretty easy to get on. You just gotta be careful not to scratch the piston. So when you get, if you get it started in there, and I need to rotate this, because once you get it in there, it's kind of a pain in the ass to rotate to get that correct. So I'm gonna come around here. And then what I'm doing to keep from getting my glove caught in there and from scratching the side, because this is spring steel, so it's under a lot more tension than the other rings are, is to use a pick. And then all I'm gonna do is just lift this up and slide it along the pick until I get right where the gap is and then just drop it right in there. And then, let's see what we did here. I trimmed this oil ring just a little bit, I put one in one of the pistons and I measured it because they come in like two or three sizes. You can see how close I matched that right there. It falls right next to one another and there's almost no gap. So that's, that's exactly the way that you wanna have it. And then I'm gonna pull the support all the way down in the groove, just like that. Now you can see how it sits in the groove, this is the base, the spring steel is the base, and it's gonna keep those others from collapsing. So then, here's my two millimeter, remember this is a four millimeter gap. This is a two millimeter oil spacer. And I'm gonna, sp I'm gonna gap it to where it is facing on the inside right here of the piston, uh, on the side right here. I'm gonna come around, get that in there, make sure it's not overlapping, and then, 
I'm gonna take, so this was from the three millimeter oil spacer kit. This was from the four millimeter oil spacer kit. So then I'm gonna go 120 degrees in either direction. And just very gently put this ring in between the oil spacer There we go. Just between the oil spacer and support right there. And then that gap is going to be, I'm going to bring that gap down to 120 degrees, which is essentially about right there, right where the piston, right where the piston skirt starts. And then I'm going to offset that on the opposite side of that, on this side of the piston skirt with the other oil ring. I'm just gently going to place that in as well. I generally am not using the oil ring pliers for these just because they're so delicate and thin. They have a tendency to not stay in there. But as long as you're delicate with them, you won't break them. Okay, and now that I've got that set up, I'm going to walk this all the way around and make sure that A, the oil ring spacer is not overlapping, which it's not. Make sure that it's pushed in all the way so that when you go to put the compressor on it, uh, the ring doesn't fall out and bend on this oil spacer right here. Now I'm going to check my ring gaps. So I've got the top and I've got the second right here. I'm going to do this on every cylinder, but I'm only going to show it on one. So I'm going to put the top in first. I'm going to push it into the bore about a half an inch. Make sure it's square. And then the, the gap on this should be 0.01 to 0.02. And so I'm going to go 0 0.015 and split the difference here. And uh, that fits. So now I'm going to go to uh, 0 0.018. And that is perfect right there. It's got tension on it, so 0 0.018 for the top ring. So that is firmly within that spec. And then now we're gonna go second ring. And I expect this second ring to probably be a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna go to a uh, two. So I'm gonna go all the way to a 0 0.025. just in there so uh, the second ring is 0 0.025 which is actually okay uh, as long as it's under 0 0.038 uh, then you're good on the second ring so we are good there as well I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna do this on the rest of the cylinders to make sure I've got the right uh, gap in the rings and then we're gonna assemble our pistons and I'm gonna take my second ring here in which case our Hastings have a dot on the top of them right there so let me take a pair of expanders. These are pretty inexpensive ones, but they work great. Expand that ring. Insert that back half in first. And then now I'm gonna clock that right here. Then I'm gonna take the top ring and our Hastings rings for the tops uh, have no markings on either side, so they'll go in either direction. I'm gonna hold that there. Ring and slide that in. Back in first, and then front end, and then I'm going to gap them just like that. So, second ring is gapped here, first ring is gapped there. 180 degrees, oil ring, spacer, oil ring, just like that. We've got oil ring, oil spacer, oil ring, so we've got them spaced out there. Now we're going to go all the way around the other side and we're going to do the compression ring uh, right here at about 7 o'clock and we're going to do the second ring at about 4 o'clock. Um, that way we have all of these spaced correctly on the piston. Alright, so I hope you found that informative. We just built the pistons in this episode because 20 minutes is a little long. We're going to be checking the tolerance between the crank and the main bearings. We're going to be checking the tolerance between the rods and the journals. 
and then we're going to be assembling the engine all the way up to where we're going to be putting the cam in. So that's the next episode and then right after that we're going to talk about the cam choice. We're going to slide the cam in and get everything else on the short block done uh, in the next episode. Man, this, is, this has been painful. Stick with us. We're going to get this thing built. And check the end screen for the last three years of, uh, I don't know, 